I always thought it would be an interesting sort of test um, since I have a 2013 Model S, like one of the oldest uh, Tesla Model S's. You know, what are the lifespans of these cars? Like, we don't really know yet. Now we're maybe coming up against that. and it's called the BMS 029 error, which means there's some thing was triggered about my battery. <clears throat> a lot of people got this alert and people are saying that there's nothing wrong with their battery, um, that they're having the battery actually checked by someone other than Tesla and they're saying that it's really not like fatal. But t Tesla will just switch it for another one and charge you full price or charge you for a remanufactured one. Um, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and show you. I just pulled out the scanner from the ODB port. Now I'm gonna put the reset device and plug that one in. There we go, it's gonna slide right in now. So how do I check it to see if it's reset? I guess I just have to try to charge it. All right, I guess I'm just gonna take it home, plug it in, charge it. It's at 15 miles right now. Um, I mean, the alert is not on the screen anymore. And before it was right there. So that's good. That's a good sign. I am very happy to report that the BMS reset device did work. It's at 148 miles. Uh, before it would only charge to 65. Um, I decided to, to charge the car with my 110 travel charger um, to charge it as slowly as possible, just to, you know, I'm just like gonna baby the battery a little bit and like hope that um, I can maybe rebalance the cells. But I'm watching it very closely. I'm charging it as slow as I possibly can. And especially now that it's getting closer to a full charge, I'm, um, I'm keeping a very close eye on it with the battery scans and looking at the temperatures of the cells and, um, and checking the imbalances to see if anything is dropping suddenly. If the cells are imbalanced enough in one part of the battery, it will start to drain the cells around it. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm keeping an eye out for any sort of like activity like that. The one horror story that I've heard about these BMS 029 devices, reset devices, is that um, somebody I bought a car, didn't know that it had been reset, charged it to 100%, then the car started acting weird. So he like reached out to a Tesla expert person. And then the then that guy said, oh, you better park it out by the street. Don't drive it, but turn on the air conditioning on high to like run the battery down a little bit. He came back out and the car was on fire. So this is the story allegedly, but we don't know who the Tesla owner is. Like this actual Tesla owner has never come out. We also don't know if there's any like contributing factors that we don't know about. I, I, I don't know. I just, I'm not sure if I buy the story at all because the pictures in the article, like it's only single sourced is one person. Apparently this person is well known in the Tesla world. And so people trust what he's saying. The picture of the car that's caught fire is not the same car that's being described in the article. So it's just all a little fishy. My reset device will reset the error eight times um, before it won't work anymore. And the other interesting thing about it is that it will only work on my car now because now that I've used it on my car, it's programmed so that it won't, it won't work on any other Tesla now. So a lot of people are like wanting me to like want, let them borrow it. <laughs> so, no, I can't let you borrow it. You have to buy your own. But, you know, it's relatively inexpensive considering how much you have to pay for a battery repair, um, $750. And if, you know, that can buy me some time, it's totally worth it um, until I can get a battery repair. If I even need a battery repair.
any little thing could trigger it. At the one cell that was really the most out of balance after checking and scanning the battery was in module 14. Since doing the reset and charging, I've checked the cells again and module 14 is looking pretty balanced. Like now it's module one that's looking the most imbalanced, six millivolts. They could just say, well, you know, we're just gonna switch the battery out. Like we don't wanna spend a whole lot of time trying to figure this out because they don't repair batteries, they just replace them anyway. So um, it's probably the easiest thing for them to do. When you're in warranty, that's great. Give me a new battery, right? Like they don't give you, re usually they give you a refabricated battery, but um, but sometimes you get a, you can get a brand new one. And when you're not under warranty, you know, this becomes a whole nother animal. And, you know, you start to really want to know, does my car really need a new battery? Is there some other way we can handle this? And yes, there are places you can repair the battery. So there are other options. I'm really stoked that I found this BMS 029 uh, Facebook group because it has been amazing. Like the information there, a lot of the battery repair uh, experts are in this group. And it makes sense that they would be because this is the group that people are coming to when they need to repair their battery to find out what's going on. And so since Tesla's not giving us the information, it's becoming available online. I'm not gonna just hand over, you know, $10,000, $20,000 without really knowing what's wrong with the battery. I can't believe that they expect us to do that. And especially when there's all this technology and all this information that is actually at our fingertips, um, it bothers me that Tesla isn't willing to have like an actual discussion with me about what's wrong with my battery. And, you know, I'm not sure what everyone else's experience has been, but like it wasn't, Tesla service wasn't like this before. They were actually really great. It was probably the best customer service experiences I've ever had until, you know, until I think the market got flooded and then they just were too overwhelmed maybe to like still have like personal customer service. Because for a long time I wasn't having any problems. And so now my battery is almost 11 years old. And um, so the day has come finally when my experience can be hopefully of value to some of you guys out there. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any comments about this subject or questions, please put them in the comments below. Um, please like and uh, subscribe. That helps me a lot to spread the word. Thanks. Take care.